Hey guys, what's going on? This is Garen with G Tactics Protection here at Zinc Arms. Uh, with my boy, Mr. Rockoff Johnson. Check out his YouTube and everything he does. Car reviews, everything, getting into the guns. But I know I put it off for a little while. I'm not really putting it off, but I suck at video editing, so that's why my man's here with me. I'm here with the review for the Underwood Extreme Defender ammo. Now this is an ammo I've been using for several years. I have experience with it, I've tested it, I've used it in multiple different uh, ways of testing and everything at the range. And I wanted to show you guys and explain to you guys finally on why I use it and why I like it. Now, to start off with my relationship with Underwood, I really don't have one. I met one of the gentlemen at SHOT Show, Mr. Caleb, and we started talking and we talked about me doing this review and why I love the ammo so much. So. He actually sent me a couple boxes of ammo during the testing and review process of this with shooting the ballistic gel and a couple range days with it. I shot 9mm, 45ACP, and 10mm. One, because those are the rounds I typically carry or the calibers I carry. And being here in Maryland in the DMV area, that's actually three of the most popular carry ammos on we have. All right, so I did this with a couple of my buddies, uh, Full Metal Sensei, who's on YouTube too, Honey Bear Tactical, uh, and ETM, or ETS Defense, another firearms instructor here in Maryland. We spent a couple days at the range. We tore up a little bit of furniture, uh, tore up a stool, because the first day we went, wasn't thinking too much of it. Actually took a video, did a video with the ballistic testing with just a stool, the gel sitting on a stool. That ain't work out very well. It worked out, but it didn't. We tore that stool up. But I actually might throw a couple pictures up on my Instagram of how that stool looked. And you ever seen what 10 millimeter do to steel? Ain't, it's pretty, but it ain't great for the body. And we did, uh, the second day we went out, we used two blocks of ballistics gel that I made up and put it on the table this time, which that testing went great until a little incident uh, at the end of it where I'm not going to mention it, what mention his name, but somebody decided to shoot the legs off on the table. <laughs> we found the table you fucked up. Oh, you found it. But it all worked out. Everything came out great. During this testing, we saw great ballistics uh, from the, all the ammo, from the 9mm to the 10mm. The 10mm and the 45, I don't care if it's the 9, like, you do not want to get hit with it. Um, one of the biggest reasons or one of the biggest questions I get, especially from students, and from just general people I talk to here in the shop, out when I'm working and everything. Why do I carry monolithics compared to carrying regular hollow points? Everybody knows the hollow points because of the police using them, state, uh, FBI, everybody uses hollow points. Hollow points are great for when we're talking about self-defense and everything. But what happens in those extreme cases or those really bad situations where you might have to use a shoot through a window might have to get through a wall or anything like that. Your hollow points actually expand on impact. Whereas though a monolithic hollow point does not, it does not do anything to deviate its course of trajectory until it actually hits the body or hits body like tissue. And it uses the fluidity, which I'm not sure if that's a word, but we're gonna rock with it. The fluidity of the body to help stop it and create the wound cavity. Now the wound cavity with this bullet is, mwah, it's beautiful. Cause the best way to describe it, you can kind of see it in the video, but the best way to describe it is the simple fact that when you look at the wound cavity, whether it's human tissue, ballistics gel, whatever, if you think of a propeller going from a boat going through water, this is exactly how that wound cavity looks going through the ballistics gel. Now we talk about the permanent wound cavity. That's the permanent wound cavity it leaves. I couldn't get a great video of it, but the temporary wound cavity along with that permanent wound cavity, I don't care if it's a person 150 pounds, somebody my size 230 pounds, or the Incredible Hulk, they get hit with that, they're going down. That wound cavity is a jacked up wound cavity. 
All right, when we shot, we actually shot the 45 and the 10 millimeter and they actually crossed paths. But when we hit it with the 10 millimeter and the 45, it actually split one side of the uh, ballistics gel. It split it to the point where when it hit the ground, it fell off the stool and hit the ground, we couldn't even pick it up in one piece. It actually started splitting more when we tried to pick it up. Now, if that doesn't tell you what it does to the body, I don't know what else will besides looking at the video. And then I know there's a couple people that's done the videos on it, but I wanted to just go ahead and let you guys know why I use it. Now, the difference between, uh, again, like I said, the hollow points expanding on impact, monolithics are used for one, for the accuracy and what it does to the body. But when you want to talk about more accuracy and greater accuracy, monolithics are where it's at. Because if you look at a lot of competition shooters that are really deep into competition, some of them, most of them do know what they're shooting and a lot of them shoot monolithic hollow points because of that accuracy, that greater accuracy ratio. Now, I like using it, I love using it. It's not a lot of recoil no matter how bad you think it is and everything. These little bullets are, the nine millimeters were 90 grain uh, projectiles coming out of that boat, out of the uh, barrel. We shot the nine millimeters out of a Staccato P, a Staccato XC, the uh, Walter PDP, and then the 10 millimeter we shot out of the Glock 20, which is a 10 millimeter, the Glock, Glock 20 Gen 4. And the 45 ACP we actually shot out of one of the original SIG P320s. All right, I know I, I had to stop and slow that down because I was about to mess it up, but the 45 came out of a SIG P320 and performed excellent. I can't say more than enough about this ammo. Uh, one of the greatest things I can speak of is just the stopping power. So, but we're gonna get into the video, let you guys see a little bit of the clips and everything. That's a wound cavity. <laughs> that's that's horrible right there. Yeah. yeah. If you have any questions or anything, drop them in the comments. You can hit me up on Instagram at gtactics underscore protection LLC. Uh, check out everybody else in the video I mentioned on their uh, YouTubes and everything. And one of the other people I have to give a shout out for, and I forgot to in my last video, is Mike, Tactical Considerations. Appreciate you, he actually pushed me well into making sure I got up and doing this. We had conversed several times about me starting this, but he gave me that good push. Um, but yeah, for now, that's about it, guys. I appreciate you all checking out the video. Please like and subscribe if you can. And I'll hit y'all with the next video soon. It'll be another ballistics jail test. All right.